Jane Slater, the NFL Network, covers the Cowboys, been all over this story, and she joins us now. Jane, good morning. Thanks for joining us. What can you tell us about this? Good morning. Well, I wasn't shocked by the retirement or this latest news about him going to CBS. You know, it was, I think, the first week, Thursday, I got a phone call right after the Mort tweet went out uh, that the Cowboys were looking to involve themselves in a trade with the Broncos and with the Texans. And the phone call that I received was, Jane, he is not going to go anywhere. Trust me, he's retiring. And as I was sort of educated about this conversation that he had with someone very close to him, a mentor for years, uh, the conversation was such that Tony just has not been able to move past Dallas and the situation that was last year. Um, It's my understanding that he still feels as though the team was taken from him, uh, that this was the best team that the Cowboys had assembled since coming to Dallas as that undrafted free agent and taking over the starter from Drew Bledsoe and that he was frustrated with the fact that here he was coming back from the back injury, and we saw him at practice throwing missiles um, after returning and not being able to compete for that job. And as he started to really think about his life after Dallas, he was having a really hard time reconciling that that life involved another team, namely Denver and or Houston. Uh, It was my sense that it was a struggle because it was a new playbook, It was a new fan base, a new locker room, and then also consider that he's enjoyed a very cozy and unique relationship with management that he wouldn't necessarily get somewhere else. And he knows that that window is closing. um, And you're just, there's a lot of expectations at 37 uh, to go ahead and sort of recreate uh, the, the security that he had in Dallas and then also hope for success. I mean, it's hard enough to get a team to a Super Bowl, and, you know, they might look good on paper now, but who's to say that team looks the same uh, during the regular season? So as he weighed all those options, uh, he kept throwing out things like, you know, Jim Nance and I have been talking. We have a great relationship. You know, what if I considered uh, this move to broadcasting? So it's my sense that those conversations had already sort of happened in the works, and maybe Jim Nance was, you know, doing some stuff for him behind the scenes to take what was once just a casual discussion between these two to the brass and saying now there's a genuine interest and then that a situation created itself and as people kept asking me you know okay which booth do you see him in cbs made the most sense because he was essentially being set up to succeed instead of fail uh, by having this mentor on his side having someone that would ensure his success uh, just seemed like the best possible move so not shocked after the conversation that I had a couple of weeks ago, and I think this is the best situation, not only for him at 37, having a child on the way and not having a strong interest to reinvest in the team, but also for Jerry Jones. No one's going to second-guess this decision now uh, that, that Jerry has decided to move on with this young Dak Prescott who won 13 games last season and decided to pass on a guy like Tony Romo, who some still feel like he may have been able to get it done with this team in in the way that it's set up right now. Okay, but Jane, the timing of it is what I find baffling, that we kept waiting. Uh, Tony was frustrated that they weren't going to uh, release him. It was going to be after the draft, closer to training camp. Then they were waiting for trade offers, not there. Then there was the report that now he's free to talk to any GM if he wants to yesterday. Then all of a sudden, Tony Romo decides that he's retiring from football. Like, it it doesn't make sense, the timeline of this. Things don't make a lot of sense all the time, Dan and Dallas, uh, but it's my, it, it's my understanding that the Cowboys and Tony Romo, specifically the Jones family, Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, were very much in contact with Tony throughout this process. Um, that perhaps, and we've seen it done before in Dallas, I don't know this for certain, but in talking to a number of people, uh, everyone seems to be on the same page on this when we're talking behind the scenes, that perhaps... Jerry and the Cowboys essentially fell on the sword for Tony because he was sort of going back and forth and the market wasn't what he thought it would be. Jerry fell on the sword and said, we don't have a timetable for this decision. The decision could come into training camp. It's buying him some time to explore these options with Hmm. these other teams while also creating a sense of urgency for these networks uh, that are maybe mulling whether or not they want to bring Tony on board if there's still a perceived interest that he could play football 
maybe there's a sense of urgency now to bring a deal to the table. So it is my understanding that everyone was still very much in cahoots. If there was anything that maybe both sides did, it was misvalued what that market would have been and misplayed the situation a little bit. And by giving him some extra time to sit on this roster and not have these willing suitors court him, rolling out the red carpet like Denver did for Peyton Manning, it might have played into this decision. Well, if, you know, if I'm – got teams that are not willing to make a trade if i've got teams that are looking at a contract that's contingent on my health i'm not going to get a huge signing bonus i'm not going to make a lot of money with this team in other words they're not investing as heavily as i thought they might do i want to invest as heavily in them and so i think there were a couple of things that came into play here uh, but to suggest that jerry jones and the cowboys violated that do right rule i'm not getting the sense that that took place we're talking to Jane Slater, NFL Network reporter, and uh, her, her Twitter handle is at Slater NFL. I guess this is ideal for everybody then, that Jerry Jones gets to have Tony retire a cowboy. He doesn't play for Houston, he, and he goes into the broadcasting field and replaces Phil Sims. I'm curious, you've been around Tony Romo for a while. How will he do as a broadcaster? You know, he's naturally charismatic. I mean, you've seen just some of his bits even with Jimmy Kimmel, and you've seen him on television. I, I think the only thing that he will probably struggle with is giving his opinion. And I think that that's something that a lot of these gold jackets struggle with as they make that transition uh, from football to TV. Some people do it successfully. Others end up going back to football. Mark Colombo uh, used to do radio with me in Dallas, and he used to tell me that, that was one of the hardest things that he ever did and now he's back doing the offensive line coaching for the Cowboys. I think that's going to be probably the hardest thing for Tony Romo. What people don't realize about Tony is he does have a bit of a fragile ego. He is concerned what people think about him. And so I think that is going to be his biggest challenge in terms of natural charisma, his ability to talk on television. You saw that firsthand with that concession speech. Very well written. Uh, his wife has a background in broadcasting. She was a sports reporter in Dallas. I think she can help navigate him. Uh, he's got a lot of friends in the business. I don't think it's going to be an issue of him committing to the craft and trying to get better at it. I think, if anything, what he's going to struggle with is perhaps inserting his opinion in those situations, as I think all of these guys learn when they move over to the media side. McLovin, give Jane the poll question. Let her respond before we say goodbye. Will Tony Romo play NFL football again? I wouldn't rule it out. And I say that <laughs> I say that because in his conversations as I was being educated about this situation leading up to today, he legitimately said, What if the Cowboys were to call me during the season? You know, I could come back and play for them. Like I could still keep that door open. And my person told him essentially he was delusional, uh, but in his mind he could still see himself in a savior role. So I wouldn't rule it out. I think that there's still that competitive drive. I think he's a little frustrated and uh, dealing with the emotions of the market not being there the way he had hoped as a 37-year-old football player that was either looking to get released or traded. I think that that fire will still burn inside. I don't know if he's going to get bored with this new lifestyle, as some people do, playing golf and broadcasting. I would say hang it up and enjoy uh, this new child on your way and enjoy the second chapter of your life. Uh, but I wouldn't rule it out completely. Thank you, Jane. We appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. All right, that's Jane Slater, NFL Network, covering the Cowboys. This from Mike Freeman, who covers the NFL. Almost everyone I'm contacting in front offices believes Romo will be back to play. <laughs> I like how Jane laid all of this out. Hey, this is what's going to happen, and this is what Tony wants, and he's going to do this. And he's, you know, do you think he'll play again? Yes. Yeah. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs>